here from the Dark Imp, helping parents reclaim family time by playing board games together. Now today, I'm tucked up in bed. You know what it's like when you've got a child at home and they're languishing on the sofa and you feel that they're not quite well enough to go back to school, but they're definitely well enough to be bothering you and needing quite a lot of attention and getting bored of the telly, unsurprisingly. So board games don't usually work very well when you're on the sofa or in bed uh, because there's too many components and there's a board and it matters where things go and if you even move just a little bit, the whole thing can go everywhere. So we're going to look today at a few things you can do if you just don't want to get up off the sofa or if you've got a sick child at home, things they can do by themselves, games they can play by themselves and also a few games you can play with them by jumping in next to them. Okay, so nicely tucked up in bed. Firstly, I was taught this when I used to work on the cruise ship by my cabin mate. We had no room, we had no, we had a tiny table, it wasn't big enough, to, you could only put one person at it, there was no, nowhere to play games. Um, and I used to use my bed to play patience on, uh, but it was all, you know, you get in and out and it's like, oh, it's cards everywhere. So my cabin mate, Jen, taught me this patience, I don't know what it's called, I always call it Jen's patience, because that was her name. You, you shuffle your cards, you take the first four in your hand and uh, if you've got the same uh, suit on either side then you remove the two from the middle. So if my first four cards were like this, spade on each end, I would take the two out of the middle and discard them. Then I draw up to four again. And now I don't have two of the same suit on the end so I have to keep picking up and now I'm looking not at this card but at these I'm looking at card one the most recent card and card four and I'm looking to see if they're the same suit and they're not so I keep picking up and I'm looking at these two now and they're still not the same suit so I keep picking up until they are or they're the same number and if they're the same number so if I had a situation like this, my last four cards are these, these are two nines, then I remove all of them and I discard all of them and I pick up again. And I'm trying to get rid of as much of the pack as possible. I have to keep picking up the pack every time uh, and I keep getting down and I, and I keep looking and look, there's my four cards, great, I can take those two out because I've got two diamonds. And you keep going. See how few cards you can end up with. That's Jen's patience. It's a lovely one. And you can do it without any kind of table. You can do it just sitting there. You don't need any space at all. Another really nice uh, game, which you can, you can do, all you need really is a sort of box lid. So if you, let's use this one. So if you get a box lid and a, this piece of paper, you can download this on Board Game Geek, uh, which is the, the forum, the website for, um, for board game hobbyists. This is called Decathlon, and it's been created by a, a man called Reiner Knizia, so that's, that's his name there. Um, and if you, go, if you search Board Game Geek Decathlon, you'll get through to the page, and you can download this for free. Um, it's ten different events that you compete in. You can do it against other people, or you can do it against yourself. You can keep, you can keep doing... Um, you can keep trying, keep doing the game to get to see what score you get and try and improve your score. Uh, before, we, I've done a video on roll and writes. This is a roll and write. You roll dice and you write down what you've got. Like Yahtzee, you roll however many dice, you look at what you've got. So each of these is a different sort of event. For example, the shot put, you've got, you start with eight dice. And you throw one after another, I've got eight now, and you throw one at a time. And you can see how far you can go, I threw a five then, that's okay, that's good. And I, and I can throw as many as I want, I can stop at any time. Oh, I got a six, that's really good. Now, I could choose to stop or I could keep going. If I, if I throw a one, I'm bust, it's a no throw. I've thrown a one. So I get zero for the whole event. Um, if I, oh, I think you get, 
you get three attempts. So you can you get three attempts to, to, to have a score, just like you, you would in, in the Olympics, I guess. Um, so that was a no throw. Then it's so this is a pusher luck thing. But each of the different events are completely different. You need different numbers of dice. I think the maximum is eight. And you can play by yourself or you can play with somebody else. Decathlon. Very comfy to play in bed, that one. Good with that. Um, there are a number of sort of one-player puzzle games that are quite good for if you're on your own and just chilling out that don't require a lot of space or are self-contained. This is one of those. This is called On the Dot. Um, On the Dot consists of a load of cards. They look like this, or they're all different. Each card is slightly different. Um, and it consists of uh, four sets, actually, of four transparent cards with dots on and what you have to do is you have to uh, put these cards in a certain way all of them all four you always have to use all four to get the pattern that you've got on your card now i'm sure that's not correct because i haven't tried to do it but you can see how what you're trying to do um, if you're playing on your if you're playing with other people you're competing to see who can get it first and then the person who gets it first wins the card you could easily do this with two people um, sitting on a bed or a sofa if you're doing it with on your own you might set yourself a timer and see how many cards you can get in that amount of time that's on the dot all right Let's put that away there are other one player games that are pretty good as well you may have come across rush hour uh, it comes in a box but I've lost my box <laughs> I've got a bag that, that mine goes in it I think it comes in a bag in a box um, so it's easy to, to take around and it's easy to shove down the, the next to the bed or something uh, it's it comes with a lot of cards and you can put them in this little tray at the front um, and then uh, each card has a setup on it and you set the cards up in that way and then you move them backwards and forwards to try and get to the point at which you can release this red car. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's quite hard to do when I can't see it properly. But your aim is to get this red car out of the side here. That's what you're trying to do. Rush hour. Another one that's similar to this is Gravity Maze. It's slightly bigger, but again, you can easily take it um, onto the onto the bed it, it doesn't you know it doesn't matter where the components go you don't have to keep things in a certain order again a set of cards each card um, let's see where we are so each card tells you so this is an expert one each card tells you which components you're going to need and which you start with so you start with a yellow one and a red one and the little dots on here show you how to position it within the board and you stand these up in the way that you've been told to and then it tells you which other elements you're going to need for this card and the aim is that you put them all you work out where to position these things so that when you put the little ball bearing I've lost mine this is like a plastic pearl bead um, when you put the little ball bearing in the top it doesn't fall on the floor like that but goes down through the maze you've created and into the little red one so that's gravity maze i really like it we we we've, we had this game out on our living room table for probably six months and everybody that came played it and the kids kept sitting down and playing it and it's a really really lovely one that you can waste waste um, that you can spend hours if you're just lying in bed doing and it's much better than watching telly so that is ooh, gravity maze okay now if you're lucky enough to uh, have a bit of time to sit down with your ill child and get into bed with them or sit next to um, sit next to them on the sofa there are some games two-player games that you can play which don't really require a big board a big table 
Um, so you could just play whist, knockout whist. Some people call uh, some people call them um, spades. It's the same as knockout whist, I think, um, or trumps rather. Uh, and you you can so dealing out cards, and uh, you've got a hand, and then it's a trick taking game. So you're trying to play a card which will take a trick. Um, search for knockout whist online, and you can find all of the um, all of the rules, but it's easy because it all you need is space for a pickup pile, a disc well maybe a discard pile, um, and places you can put your tricks when you've taken them, and it doesn't matter where you place them. So it doesn't really matter if the bed moves or the sofa moves. So you could play any kind of whist really that doesn't require um, anything being laid out. Trip taking games are quite good for that. Um, another card game that's pretty good. Uh, that you don't. I mean, you could, there are lots of card games that you don't really need a set amount of space for. Um, that you just have one discard pile, one draw pile. Suited is one of those. So in Suited, you have two different kinds of decks, and you're dealt some of each deck. So there's the um, the question card, uh, the sort of the challenge cards, which look something like this. They have got a an orange back. Um, the challenge cards tell you, for example, that you've got to have less than four reds or less than four diamonds or both on the card that you respond with. This one, for example, says you've got to have six or more orange things. And then when you have been challenged, you have to respond with a response card, these are these ones, which meet the challenge. So for, so all the response cards have on them the four different suits and four different colours. So this one has got, as you can see, quite a lot of orange on it and only one blue. Um, it's got quite a few different symbols. It would be perfect response to this card. So this card requires six or more orange. This has got uh, 11 orange so that's fine so on your turn you respond to the challenge that has been set by the previous player and then you add a challenge yourself so less than five hearts and it's the first player to manage to get all their cards out uh, very simple it doesn't require much brain power you can certainly play it when you're ill you just have to work out which cards you want to hold back and which cards are, which cards are more useful than others so that's suited um, a complete old classic, Mastermind. Now it has got quite a lot of bits, but honestly you can just leave them in the box and have this on the sofa next to you. It's got pegs, you've probably all played this. I used to play this with my granny. Um, it's a two player game. One player chooses four pegs and places them in their little, behind their little um, uh, guard, uh, guard thing so that the other player can't see what they've placed. So I've, you can, you may, hopefully you can see green, blue, red, blue. And then the other player has to choose uh, four things, four pegs to put down there and then they're going to get a response. So you might have something like this two whites, two greens, and what I'm asking, what this is asking is, are there any whites and greens in these places? And the answer is no, there's nothing in the right place. So I'm not going to give you any pegs for a right colour in a right place, but there is one that is the right colour in the wrong place, and that gives you a little white peg there. If I'd have put this green over here, I would have got myself a red peg as, uh, instead of the white one, which says you've got one that's in the right, that's the right colour in the right place. Then you use the information you're given to gradually get closer and closer to the answer, and you have to get to it, well, as quickly as you can, but certainly before you get to the end. Um, that's Mastermind. It does. You can balance it on on the sofa, on your laps, on the bed. It's a classic and it's a lovely game and you can play over and over and over. Mastermind. Um, I've also been having a, a little look at this old Giles Brandreth 
book that my mum was clearing out her house and I, I rescued it <laughs> from fr from the clear out and um, we have battleships you probably have battleships or you've seen battleships the game from MB where you have your own little um, uh, sort of board and you put all your ships in you can play that without having the, the board if you get yourself a 10 by 10 grid uh, and somebody else you need to play with somebody else uh, and you just print off two 10 by 10 grids and label the rows and columns uh, this is labeled 1 to 10 and this is labeled A to J and you each need one of these um, then you can decide what ships you're going to put in. So an aircraft carrier might be five spaces, uh, a submarine might be three spaces. This is all in this bumper book of games, but for sure you can find it online as well. Then you're going to say things like, okay, uh, H3, and the other player will say hit or miss. And if you've hit, you have to say what you've, hit. well, you can play two ways. You can say hit, battleship or you can just say hit and and try and get the other player to find out what it what it is and not give them information about how long the ship is so there's two different variations there but I really like the third variation in here which is called salvo so instead of just firing one shot you fire three shots you say I'm firing shots at a10 B b3 and um, h5 and the response is two misses and a hit and so you get information but you don't get exact information and you have to use what you've what you've already learnt to help you okay so that's battleships another game from the bumper book of games is this uh, acrostics game so you choose a sort of i've chosen the word scrabble here scrabble's our puppy um i've written scrabble downwards and then I've written Scrabble upwards and this is a game to play with somebody else you can play it by yourself if you really want to um, and what you're trying to do is um, is you're trying to write words you set yourself a timer to write words that will fit with this is the starting letter and this is the ending letter so for example science would fit here with the starting letter S and the ending letter E uh, it, I could have here clear or caramel um, here I could have rib um, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head for an A and a B uh, I could have envelopes along the bottom that would be great it's loads and loads of letters which gives me loads and loads of points finally I just want to end by saying if you are stuck in bed for a while like several several days or a week Get yourself a copy of Legacy of Dragonhold. It's a, a role-playing adventure, but it's all in the box. You don't need a, a, a sort of um, a, a, a games master to lead your way through. Everything you need is here. You create your own character and you go on a sort of choose your own adventure story. I will do more on this in another video, but right now, go and have a look at Legacy of Dragonhold.